Eight bit, dude. That's so awesome. Yeah. Don't know why though. Must have pressed the wrong button. Whoa. You up there, dude? Dude, I am your fog filmmaker. So you like eight bits, huh? Well, it depends. Who are you? I'm eight bit, dude, man. Like the old games, you know. Like what you are going to talk about in this video. No, no. No, that's not the 8-bits this video is about. Yeah, I think it is, dude. Yeah, no, no, no. You're just stuck in the old gaming world, man. What? Hey, oh, hey. Yeah, come on. Get out. I'm not that bad, you know. Yeah, I really like the 80s, though. I just love the, the gaming, the music. Just the general vibe from the 80s is awesome and it's, it's really my thing. But that's not what we're going to talk about in this video. No, this is about the 8-bit 420 versus the 10-bit 422. What's the difference? When are you going to use what? I know it can be quite confusing. Believe me, I'm still confused sometimes. But if we just set the technical bits and bobs aside and just look at the difference and see if we can find anything that favors one or the other. And even if I'm using my Lumix GH5 as the test camera in this video, the science behind this is still the same no matter what camera you're using. But this is not going to be a technical video. I'm not going to deep dive into any technical bits. Uh, I'm just going through the basics so that you know what we are talking about. And when it comes to video and image quality, there's two major things that plays a big role in that. Color depth or bit depth on one hand and chroma subsampling on the other hand. And color depth refers to the number of bits used to represent the color in each pixel in an image. You can think of it like this. You have your canvas out, you're going to paint a picture. You're going to need colors to paint that picture with. And the number of bits you have is the number of available colors to choose from when painting that picture. Okay? But in reality, it's actually shades of each color that you have to choose from, not actual colors. So a higher color depth allows for a greater range of colors and more subtle color changes, resulting in more vibrant and realistic images. All right, that's color depth. But what about chroma subsampling then? Well, that is actually a technique used to reduce the amount of information needed from each video that you are shooting. Let's say that you have your painting, the beautiful painting that you have done, isn't it lovely? If you zoom in on a specific part on that picture, that image that you have drawn, you will see some pixels. Chroma subsampling is that you're looking at your neighbors. You don't want to be your own color, you just want to to copy your nearest neighbor. So this guy here, he takes a look at the neighbor and sees that, oh my God, he's red. Okay, I, I need to be red as well. And then he turns red. And the, the, the neighbor next to him, well, he, he's kind of a free spirit. So he has his own colors. But the guy next to him, well, the same thing there. He doesn't want to, to choose his own colors. He just wants to have someone to look at in life. So he looks at his neighbor and, oh yeah, he, he's turning blue. So that is chroma subsampling. Instead of having one color for each pixel in this zoomed in version, you just look at the neighbor and get the same color. And this can be applied in different steps depending on what chroma subsampling level you are using. And as you may understand, this can lead to loss in color and the gradients will look a little bit blocky and so on because you will have bigger blocks of the same color instead of smaller pixels with each color. I hope you understand what I mean. But now when we have that boring part out of the way, let's take a look at the footage. But first, and this is a big but guys, probably you are watching this on a screen that is only able to show 8-bit information, plus that YouTube compress this image. So you may or may not see any difference in this test footage. So what's the point of using 10-bit then you wonder? Well, let's uh, talk about that a little bit later.
All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve and let's take a look at the footage and see if we can spot any difference at all. This is the 10-bit video and this is the 8-bit video. So right off the bat, if we just click between them, personally, I don't see any difference at all. You can look at the colors and see if you can spot any difference there, like the red and the green, maybe in this bright part. And look for if there are subtle colored shades or gradients between this darker blue and the, the brighter blue. Keep an eye on that when we apply some crazy grading to see if we can make any difference here. So let's start with a 10 bit and I'm going to do a really, as I said, a really crazy grade just to bring out the difference. And now you can see up here in the sky that we have the dark blue, the teal and almost white. If we do the same for the 8-bit, do you notice anything different just by looking at this without zooming in? Well, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? But if we zoom in a little bit and move up to this part in the sky, and you can see the pixels, you can see the shading is kind of failing in this part. But if we look at the 8-bit, you can see that it's failing even more. Here you have big chunks of pixels grouped together with less color information. So that's why you get this almost 8-bit Nintendo style. If we go back to the 10-bit, you can see it's much smoother and you can almost not see the pixels. Well, you can see the pixels, but if that's if you zoom in really, really much. Let's take a look at the next video example. And this is quite similar. You have some blue, you have some green. Well, that's not blue, is it? <laughs> you have some yellow, you have some green. You have some blue and you have some, well, brown. I don't see any difference between these two. I, I mean, they are even more similar than the, the last one. It's just that the, this little bush is waving a little bit like, hello, hello. That's the only difference I can see. So apply, we apply the same crazy color grading. And as you can see, we have the same phenomena up in the sky. And the last video is actually of the same sky, but one of them is in natural color profile and the other one is in V-Log light, which I have on my Lumix GH5. This is 10 bit, this is 8 bit. Let's just take a look at those first. Any difference? Well, here we can actually see that it's little, little, it's a very, very subtle change down here at the grass. You can see that in the 10 bit version, it's a little bit brighter and I assume that you have more detail in that corner. Let's zoom in and take a look. So here we have the 10 bit version and in the 8 bit, it's a little, little bit more bland, washed out. This is more vibrant. It pops a little bit more. So if we look at the sky here, wow, this is really dramatic, isn't it? It's... Let's zoom in and see if we have some... Uh some gradients, some, something going on. Well, it's not much, but you can see some around the sun. Now we start to see the crazy. I, I mean, this is, this is a color grade out of this world. It's not, uh, it's not something that you would use, but you can see the difference. So let's apply the same to this one. Here, you can see the same, the same blocky effect, same pixelated effect. That's just, that's what you get. That's what you get with 8 bits. If we zoom in, I mean, if we zoom out, What's the difference? Not much, I would say. So let's see what we can do with this log profile then. If we apply a slight S curve, just to get a little bit more dramatic sky, maybe like that, we get, we get a nice sun, but we still have the details in the clouds and the sky. And here, if we just switch between these two, you can see that the only difference is that the 8-bit version is a little bit more washed out just like we saw earlier. And if we zoom in on the sun, we can see the same thing happening here. We get more color banding in the gradients between the, the shades of uh, the colors. And it's overall more details in this 10-bit version. So now you have seen the test footage, you have seen what we did with the image in DaVinci Resolve. And what did you think? My personal opinion first, if you have to zoom in and apply a crazy, sh sorry, crazy grading, then I don't know, I don't know really. Do you really have to use 10 bits? Well, let's look at the pros and the cons for each of these settings. The pros for the 10s is actually the cons for the 8s. So the pros for the 10s would be 
you have more information and more information is always a good thing. You can do gradings the way you want. You can use chroma key much easier if you're having a green screen and you can uh, uh, fix bad exposure. You have more color fidelity and the one thing that we saw repeatedly in the DaVinci Resolve part, you have less uh, color banding between the different shades of the colors. And it can be that you need to have 10 bit for the work that you are doing. But on the other hand, if you need that, then probably you already know this. So what about the cons for the 10 bit, which would be the pro for the 8 bit maybe? Well, the obvious one is the file size. The file sizes are huge. It's a huge difference. Uh, the 10 bits are much bigger and you need a better computer to edit those. So that can be actually a decisive thing if you don't have that good of a computer. But other than that, the 10 bit is of course the better choice. Or is it now? So what are my final recommendations then? Well, it's quite easy actually. You should use 10 bit for any paid work, anything that has a high demand for image quality and a possibility for color grading. And if you're using a green screen to chroma key your image, use 10 bit. That's it. For everything else, use 8 bit. Told you, man. 8 bit. That's awesome, dude. What? You again. Just saying. You want me.